right now on Five on Your Side at 10. Super Soaker, the most rain from any system in two months. When the rain will be winding down and what changes are next? Tonight, a man is behind bars accused of strangling his girlfriend and torturing her young son for months. It's a very disturbing case. The prosecutor calling it one of the worst crimes he's ever seen. Plus, services severed. The dispute tonight leading to layoffs and a big change on how St. Louis students get to school. But first tonight, the gusty winds are dying down, but rain continues to fall on St. Louis as big changes move in overnight. Good evening, everyone. I'm Kelly Jackson. And I'm Mike Bush. Much colder air is now moving in, so let's get straight over to Chief Meteorologist Scott Connell with that weather first forecast. Well, we have temperatures that are down into the 50s in St. Louis, but you don't have to go too far to get it much colder. And tomorrow we're going to feel some of that chill in the St. Louis area. We've had a good soaking rain, though, and that is badly needed. It's the most rain we've had since back in January. So at Lambert tonight with the rain, flights are coming and going, but some minimal delays across the area. You can see the rain spreading through the bi-state area. Heaviest now tending to shift east away from St. Louis, but we're still looking at rain around the metro area. And when we look back to the west, that back edge of the rain, well, it's pushing in towards, let's say, Union down to Sullivan, but it's moving more northeast than it is to the east. So it's a slow process to get it to end. Probably have about another hour and a half in St. Louis before it comes to an end. West of town, though, a good soaking one to two inches of rain. Over two inches in Rolla in St. James, close to it out in Warrington and Wentzville. Even in the metro area, we are now pushing close to an inch of rain. We're in the mid 40s now. Look at the snow back across parts of Nebraska and Kansas, and it is in the 20s there. We will get that cool down by tomorrow afternoon. We're only in the 40s for most of the day tomorrow. Lots of clouds and a breeze, but we will dry out. We'll see in a few minutes. We'll talk more about the changes as we head towards the upcoming weekend. More troubles tonight for the bus company responsible for getting St. Louis Public School students to and from school. Missouri Central has terminated its contract with the district. This comes amid allegations of racial discrimination at the bus garage. New tonight, Laura Barteski is here with what is next for drivers and students. Mike and Kelly, the contract was supposed to go through the 2024-2025 school year, but now it could end as soon as the middle of July. St. Louis Public Schools says it's been a tumultuous two school years dealing with Missouri Central School Bus Company, saying in a statement Monday afternoon, Missouri Central's inability to maintain enough drivers to transport the students of SLPS has been well documented. They report that the driver shortage makes it economically unviable for them to honor their agreement. The district says they were given no notice that the company would be making this public announcement. Missouri Central said in that letter, despite good faith efforts by both sides, the parties were unable to negotiate mutually agreeable terms. That means they're going to permanently close the Spring and Hall Street locations, leaving 332 people without jobs. SLPS says they've been negotiating with the bus company since December when they demanded an additional $2 million. Then in February, mechanics for the company raised concerns about racial discrimination, even finding a noose near a workstation, which led to a driver walkout. For two days, thousands of students had no transportation to school. Parents are already tired of the uncertainty. Once in a while, is understandable, but you know, consistently, it, it you know, affecting our jobs. So for us, it's just really challenging because we have two people in our house who hold who both work. Um, and as much as I have a lightly flexible work schedule, it is asking a lot to ask my supervisors frequently to be able to adjust my schedule in order to be able to leave early from work in order to come and pick up. The district says last week the company told them the controversy quote provided irreparable harm to their reputation and said they could no longer work with St. Louis Public Schools. St. Louis Public Schools says they're starting the search for a new transportation company as the agreement with Missouri Central will only last through the summer school. They are currently working on other temporary solutions just in case there's another disruption and they hope to provide another update this Friday. Thanks Laura. New tonight, the Edwardsville School Board gave the green light to a gender neutral restroom. It will be built in the Commons area of Edwardsville High School. The design calls for private, fully enclosed, single use toilet stalls. The sinks will be located in a common area opened to the lobby and hallway. Tonight, a man is behind bars accused in a violent two county crime spree. Investigators say Stephen Deering beat a woman unconscious at a Maplewood business on Friday afternoon. 
A short time later, investigators believe he assaulted an elderly woman at her home in Barnhart and stole her car. He's accused of crashing that stolen car into another home in Barnhart and taking three young children hostage. Jefferson County Sheriff Deputy Christopher Guerin arrived moments later and kicked down the door to save those kids and arrest Deering. Tonight, a North St. Louis County man wanted for strangling his girlfriend, beating and tying her young son to a pole, is now in jail. New tonight, Five on Your Side's Robert Townsend has more on the disturbing allegations and charges. Robert. Mike, for months, Rodney Wilson had been on the run from police, but Friday, officers tracked him down. The alleged abuse Wilson inflicted on his girlfriend and her child has left the St. Louis County prosecutor shaking his head. This is a mugshot of suspect Rodney Wilson. He's facing a long list of charges, including abuse or neglect of a child, kidnapping and assault. Wilson is accused of terrorizing his girlfriend and her eight-year-old son. It's a very disturbing case. According to a probable cause statement in July of last year, Wilson allegedly tied his girlfriend's child to a pole in a basement, blinded and gagged the child, and struck him with a wooden stick. Police also say between August and September, Wilson beat the child again, poured various substances on him, and cut the boy's scalp with a blade. Investigators say the alleged abuse took place in the North County home where the mom and her son lived. Um, how someone can do these types of things, um, allegedly, you know, to a child or what have you, um, is, is, is just beyond comprehension. Investigators also say Wilson strangled the woman in September and last month. They tell us the child witnessed the first attack on his mom. She is still in the hospital um, from injuries that um, we believe the defendant is responsible for. We are very uh, confident in the strength of the evidence um, and we intend to hold this defendant fully accountable. Bell says at one point Wilson left the St. Louis area and took off to Las Vegas. On Friday, St. Louis County Police arrested him at a home in South St. Louis. And again, we're going to do everything that we can to to bring justice to um, the victims in this case. Investigators say officers previously responded to calls to that home, including one in 2021, when Wilson allegedly punched the woman's sister in her face multiple times. Wilson is now locked up and being held without bond. Tonight, charges have been filed against four people in connection to a shooting inside a Metro East bowling alley. Investigators say the gunfire inside St. Clair Bowl earlier this month stemmed from a fight. Two bystanders retreated for gunshot wounds to their legs. Mikhail Davis of St. Louis is in the St. Clair County Jail tonight, charged with unlawful use of a firearm. Three others are also wanted in the case. Investigators say there is no evidence the gunfire was connected to a large fight in the same night in the bowling alley involving a group of young women. Tomorrow morning, opening statements will begin in the trial of a man accused of murdering a St. Charles woman and keeping her body in his bedroom for days. Joseph DeJoy is accused of killing Jackie Mitchell last year. She was missing for days before police found her body in his Maryland Heights apartment. He faces 11 felony charges, including second-degree murder, kidnapping, and rape. An historic North St. Louis church will be torn down after a fire last week. It was the third fire in two years at the former St. Augustine Roman Catholic Church. The building at the corner of Lismore and Hebert has sat vacant for years despite community efforts to save it. The city, which now owns the property, says it's at risk of collapsing and needs to be demolished. About an hour ago, a meeting wrapped up in Creve Core where neighbors voiced their concerns about a proposed mixed-use development. It will be built on the former 96-acre Bear Campus on the southwest corner of Olive and Lindbergh. Five in your size, Annie Crawl was at tonight's meeting. At this meeting on Monday night, Creve Core city leaders are potentially deciding how to use millions of dollars in real estate taxes as well as a special sales tax to help developers with this project to turn into apartments, townhomes and retail shops, plus much more by the time they're done. 
The project comes with a price tag close to $985 million for the Olea Village at the previous Bayer's North American headquarters. Also adding luxury hotels and office buildings may need city council help to foot the bill. Approving an abatement of $86 million to reduce property tax payments for years with this project to help developers with the cost was on the table. Plus a one cent sales tax proposed by Fireside Financial for up to 25 five years. Representatives from the private equity real estate firm Jack Matthews Development tried to help explain how these steps and recommendations for cost control came about, but some members of the community are still hesitant. So to get to this meeting it's taken us 18 months. This plan requires incentives to offset the extraordinary costs and the project can't move forward without. The problem is uh, it's being presented as let's take what the developers offered or We've got nothing because we have a vacant piece of ground. But it's, this is a prime piece. People would, there were more than one developer. We're trying to get it in the first place, and there are other options. After this public hearing, Creve Corps City Council members are expected to discuss and take a final vote on April 8th. Reporting in Creve Corps, Annie Crawl, five on your side. From Netflix, Hulu, Amazon Prime. They're easy to sign up for, but hard to cancel. I know I pay for things I don't use. Tonight, three easy ways to unsubscribe from your digital accounts. You can wear your sunglasses at night, but not during next month's eclipse. The warning tonight from eye doctors. Just two weeks from the solar eclipse. Too soon to speculate on the cloud cover for April 8th, but we know what's happening for the rest of the week after tonight's rain moves out. We'll see you in seven minutes.